Welcome back to Smash 101, your one-stop shop for competitive onboarding. Whether you're new to the game, trying to get into spectating or anything in between, this is the place to be. Some aspects of Smash are very hard to understand. You don't really get a guide on all these small, minute details that go into the game. And there are a lot of these details, one of them being character states. So in other words, there are small differences between character states that influence how you can act. Like for example, when you're in the air after jumping yourself, or if you're in the air after getting Getting hit there. This state can greatly influence what moves, what options you have available to you. And today I will be showing them all to you and dissecting what the consequences are for your play. We're getting more and more complex here in Smash 101, so stay tuned for more episodes for now. Let's get into this week's episode on character states. Everyone, please enjoy. Last week, we looked at the anatomy of a move, and this week, we're gonna be looking at the anatomy of your character. Let's get into it. So again, for this week, I want you guys to have a mental separation between grounded and aerial states. Let's look at the grounded states first. The grounded state is often seen as the optimal state because you have the most options available. Most importantly, you can jump at any time. Whereas if you're in the air, you need to wait to get back to the ground. On the ground, we have access to all our normal attacks, as well as a very important option, shielding. That's where we get to our first state. So we can be on the ground, we can be walking around, walking doesn't really limit our options, so it doesn't really count as a separate state. However, shielding does. When we shield, suddenly some of our inputs change. For example, if we hold shield and we press attack, we get a grab. If we hold shield and we press special, nothing happens at all. The only options we have on a shield are grab, jump, rolling by pressing to the side, spot dodging by pressing down, and up smash and up b we're gonna go way more in depth on shielding in a later episode but just keep in mind when you're shielding it counts as a separate state and your inputs change because of the separate state another very common grounded state we talked about last time as well is dashing so while you're dashing your inputs change again if you press a you get your dash attack while we are dashing we cannot easily turn around because we have the turnaround animation so generally when dashing we want to rely on shielding on jumping or on our special moves. Dashing is one of the more limiting states because of the nuance that all of the various tilts, jabs and smashes give our character. If you are dashing, all of that nuance is lost and we mainly have to rely on dash attack. We talked about the anatomy of a grounded dash in Mastering Movement where we said it's first an initial dash, this low hop, and then it turns into an actual dash. During the initial dash, you cannot use anything but a dash attack with your A button outside of up smash, right? So if you use a tilt during your initial dash, it becomes a dash attack. After your initial dash, if you're in your full dash, you can return your stick to neutral and then input a tilt. So you can do some tilt attacks outside of your initial dash. So you go into full dash, go to neutral and press down tilt and you get a dash up tilt attack. You can do the same for smashes and for other tilts as well as any of the other ground moves that you would like to go into. Like for example, a running jab. So those are the main grounded states. So we have our actionable state, which includes walking, standing around. We have a little bit of a limited state, which is dashing. And then we have a very limited state, which is shielding, in which we cannot even use our normal attacks and are only limited to a smash and a B. Now the aerial state changes a few things as well. For one, again, our attacks are different. We only have our aerial attacks. We don't have any tilts, jabs, smashes, etc., etc. Additionally, while we are jumping, our shield turns into a dodge. This changes the defense a lot because a dodge rather than a shield is very committal. When I'm shielding, I can stop shielding at any time. I can jump out of shield, etc, etc. When I'm dodging, I'm stuck dodging for a while as I try to get to the ground. Another thing we want to consider when in the air is fast falling. So if we're in the air, we can press down and get to the ground faster. So here's my normal jump. It takes a while, as you can see. And here's the fast fall. And you can see this through the little spark next to Mario. So let's take a look at slow motion and look at Mario's head. See that spark appear in front of his nose? It appears somewhere around his head. It's not always consistent, but it indicates that the player has fast fallen. You can only fast fall after the apex of your jump. So you cannot fast fall while you are going up. You need to wait until you're going down and then you will go down just that bit faster. And that helps a lot. However, there's also a negative to being in the air, and that is when you get hit. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a hit. So the first thing that happens when you get hit is that the game freezes for a while to really accentuate 
the fact that you just got hit. Afterwards, we start flying off as the camera tries to catch up. And during this time, we cannot do anything. If we press any button, it will not come out. This is called hit stun. This is a time in which you cannot do much. After we're done flying away, we now enter tumble. During tumble, Mario will be tumbling down. We can do anything we like during this time. However, we should be careful because if we don't do anything, we will fall on the ground in what is called a tack position. So if we are in this position, we can only do three things. We can get up normally or roll to one of the sides. So here's the normal get up. Here's the side roll. And here's the other side roll. And the final option is get up attack, which is done by pressing A while in this position. Now, this is something that happens almost every single time you get hit. First, there's hit lag, during which the game freezes. Then there's hit stun, during which you are stunned and cannot do anything. And then you enter tumble. If you then don't do anything, you will hit the ground and get into a tech position. So let's see about all the control we have during this time. So here's the first part of control. It's called DI or directional influence. Basically, it means that if we hold a direction, we can change which way we fly. So if I hold towards Fox, I will fly straight up. Meanwhile, if I hold away from Fox, I will fly extremely diagonally. Now, since the stage is a rectangle, you want to generally aim towards the corners because that way you have to fly further before you reach the blast zone. And of course, when you reach a blast zone, you're gonna lose your stock. So this is a great example. If I hold in, you can see that I passed the upper blast zone, the, the green line that indicates, hey, this is where a blast zone would normally be. In other words, you die. Meanwhile, if I hold away, I don't even touch the blast zone, even though I was at the same percent. And this is the first bit of control that we have. We can steer ourselves away from the opponent, away from the blast zone, etc, etc. So be sure to hold a direction in which you would like to adjust your angle just a little bit, maybe to survive a little bit longer, get away from the opponent before they hit you again, etc, etc. Now one thing to keep in mind is that hit stun allows for combos. So this is an example of a combo. As you can see, the combo counter to the right says it's 8 hits in a row, and the total damage is 22. The entire time during this combo, my opponent is in hit stun. It's a very simple combo, it's only 3 moves in a row. However, it does illustrate the simple concept of hitting your opponent while they are still in hit stun. So now we go into the second part where we have control over our character, and that is Teching. So by pressing the shield button just before hitting the ground and either neutral on the stick or a direction, you can roll or tech in place. This will give you a little bit of invincibility and get you back on your feet as soon as possible. So keep in mind before you hit a surface, press the shield button to get attack. So now I want to talk about the final common state that we often see in the game, which is ledge hang, which is when you're grabbing the ledge and you're hanging down here. In this state, you actually only have a few options. If you press A, you get an attack. If you just press to the stage, you will do a normal getup. If you press shield, you will do a ledge roll. And if you press jump, you will do a ledge jump. The final thing you can do is drop from the ledge by pressing away or pressing down. However, this often puts you in a little bit of a tough spot, so I wouldn't recommend doing this while you learn the game. Mixing up your options from a ledge hang is very important because if the opponent knows which option you're going to do, they can hit you with a very strong move for doing it. So the one time you might want a normal getup, the other time you might want to jump, and the other time you might want to roll. As long as you stay unpredictable, your opponent's going to have a hard time hitting you. Do keep in mind, if you wait too long on the ledge, your invincibility is going to run out. Every time you grab the ledge, you're invincible for a little time, giving you a little bit of time to think about what you want to do. If you wait too long, that invincibility is going to be gone, and your opponent can just hit you off the ledge. So as you can see, I flicker for a little bit as I grab the ledge, and then it's gone. And now my opponent can hit me. The final state I want you guys to think about is special states. So special moves sometimes come with their own states. So an example would be Mario's down and B, where he charges the flood. While he is charging the flood, he can actually shield. He can jump. You can also roll by pressing to the side. Or spot dodge by pressing down. But he cannot attack. So keep in mind that a lot of these charging moves, like Savage Charge Shot, like Mario's Down B, like Hero's Menu, they all generally allow you to jump or shield, 
but not much else. And that's it for this week's Smash class. Hope you now understand a little bit more about how the game works. I hope this will help you start to combo your opponents, get them during that hit stun with another move and get those sequences rolling and really create highlights for your own character and your own gameplay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you guys next week for another episode of Smash Class. They just keep getting better. For now, stay smart.